Linear correlation coefficients are one of the more underappreciated concepts in our course. Um, I think even, even those of us that have been successful at getting these questions right maybe have only kind of a surface-like understanding of the topic and how valuable it really, really is. But basically, here's what's happening is um, you could take any, uh, you could take a set of data out of any real-life scenario, and we could take those data points and plot them. For instance, uh, 2 comma 2 is an ordered pair. We put it right here. Uh, 4 comma 3 is another ordered pair. We put it right here and so forth. And, and you construct what's called a scatter plot. And then once we get our scatter plot, we're trying to create what's called a line of best fit. Um, and this line of best fit is a lot of times called a linear regression. So line of best fit and a linear regression are one and the same thing. They're synonymous with each other. And once you create that line of best fit, some are better than others. In other words, the ultimate question becomes, how well does my line of best fit fit the scatter plot? Is it is it accurate or is it kind of wishy-washy? How strong is it? And that's what we're going to get at today. The correlation coefficient is the R value that shows up on our calculator screen. And what that R value does is it describes how well or how strongly our line fits the scatter plot. Well, a very popular question that we ask ourselves is what's the best possible correlation coefficient? And the answer is there's actually two answers. It's a tie. Both positive one and negative one are equally as good, and they both represent perfection. In other words, um, on the first one here on the left, we have a positive trend. Okay, uh, the, as the x values increase, so do the y values. They increase at the same rate here. And, and so that since all those dots line up perfectly, we said the correlation coefficient is positive one. And then over here on the right, we have a, a negative trend. As the x values increase, the y values decrease. And because of that trend, we'd say, now they still line up perfectly. We would just describe it as negative one being downhill. So basically, in other words, remind yourself, it's impossible to have an r value greater than one or uh, below negative one. That's impossible. It's somewhere, it's got a range. So basically, we're going to say r is always going to be somewhere between negative one and positive one. It's just a matter of where it's going to be inside that interval. Now we could also flip that question around and ask ourselves, what's the worst possible correlation coefficient? And I would say the worst is zero. That represents complete randomness and chaos. Um, and it means there's absolutely no pattern whatsoever to speak of at the, within the scatter plot. All right, two things I want to cover here on this slide before we get into some real life examples. Uh, a linear equation has obviously a slope and uh, there's a relationship between the slope and the correlation coefficient. Now, number one, they're not going to be the same value. All right. Um, for instance, you might have a slope of, you know, two, but of course, R can't be bigger than one. So maybe your R value ends up being 0.9 or something, you know, something like that. So they're not the same value. However, they will have what's the, what I call the same sign. Okay, if the slope is positive, then we do know that the R value is guaranteed to be positive, or vice versa. If the slope of a linear equation is negative, then the R value is also guaranteed to be negative. So that relationship right there is always in play. They'll have the same sign, that's a guarantee. Just a couple more pictures to give you um, a visual image of these scatter plots, um, and I think they're self-explanatory. I just want to touch on them really quick. The first one here in the upper left-hand corner, very strong positive relationship, and we could kind of estimate like an R value of positive 0.9-ish in that ballpark. The second one in the top middle is not, it's still positive, but it's not as strong. So the R value might be something like 0.5 or 0.6, you know, somewhere in that neighborhood. It's still fairly strong. Um, this one in the upper right has no correlations, therefore the R value is zero. It's completely random and chaotic. Um, let's see, lower left hand corner, moderately negative, you know, we might say something like negative, you know, 0.6 or 0.7 ish. Uh, this one would be negative 0.9 ish in that ballpark. And then I don't want you to worry about the curvy linear one. But again, just to reiterate what we said on the last slide if the, if the R value is positive, your line that you draw will also have a positive slope, um, which is true in both of those cases. And then we come down here and we say, okay, negative slope corresponds and, and correlates with a negative R value. All right, so what we've done here is we've created a problem where we analyze the average daily temperature 
And, and we also recorded how many visitors there were at the beach on that given day. And so I think your intuition kind of kicks in and says, yeah, this makes a lot of sense. You know, the higher the average daily temperature, the more visitors we're going to have at the beach. And I'll tell you, anytime the problem is, uh, starts talking about visiting a beach, it kind of piques my interest and I get a little excited and uh, start looking forward to summer vacation and whatnot. But um, so anyway, I've wrote, written down the table here and I've also created, uh, generated a nice scatter plot to go along with it. And our big theme, of course, is we're going to try to find the R value and, and hopefully appreciate what that number represents. Now, right off the bat, I think we'd all make a, a, a pretty good guess that we know the R value is going to be positive something. How, do we, how can we guarantee it's going to be a positive number? Well, as we draw um, our best fit line here and kind of take a stab at that, obviously it has a positive slope. And we know that slope and the R value aren't going to be the same number per se, but they're both going to be positive in this particular case. So what I want you to do here is I want you to take a moment to hit pause, get all of these uh, data points plugged into list one and list two. So obviously we're going to put the degrees Fahrenheit into list one and the number of visitors into L2. And then we're going to run that regression and then we'll compare our calculator screens and see if we agree. So go ahead and do that right now. So here's what I saw on my calculator. First thing I did is I just went to the stat edit and I got all my data plugged in there. Um, and then we went over to the calculate menu and we jumped on choice number four right here. We ran that linear regression. Now obviously not every regression is going to be linear. A lot of times on our grizzlies we've seen exponential or power or some other wild ones and we just got to scroll down further. So you got to pay attention to which one they're asking for. A lot of times they, uh, instead of saying linear regression, sometimes they might just say line of best fit and that means the same thing. And so here's the big daddy over here. Now, I want you to totally ignore the R squared. There's never, ever, ever a moment where we're going to use that number in this class anyway. It, Pay attention to your R value right here. So depending on how many decimals they're asking for, that's the one we jump all over. And certainly that number is positive. And it's pretty close to positive 1, which I think we would have guessed because up here our scatter plot was pretty close to fitting that line. Or we could say the line was pretty close to hitting every point on the scatter plot. All right, I've pulled up a bunch of multiple choice questions. We're going to kick it into high gear and buzz through these. So if I go too fast, just rewind it and replay it. But uh, uh, right off the bat here, we're looking for an R value with a strong negative correlation. Now, the strongest possible would be negative 1, and then we can't go beyond that. So I'm going to cross off 1 right away. That's impossible. And then um, number 2 would be the strongest of the negative correlations. Uh, this one, we're looking for the just the strongest linear relationship. Could be positive or negative. So I'm going to scroll through them, and I'm going to basically ask myself which one of these R values is farthest away from zero. And it looks like this one, winner, winner, chicken dinner, right down here in choice four, that one's the farthest away from zero. In other words, this one's closer to negative one than um, the choice number one was to positive one. Well, they've uh, presented us here with a scatter plot, and based on the scatter plot, it'd be reasonable to conclude what? Um, let's see, choice number one says that the age and value have a correlation coefficient less than zero. I, I like that one right there. I'm, I'm agreeing with that one right away because my line of best fit has a negative slope. So I'm also expecting an R value that's negative and that's the same thing as saying less than zero. Number two says it's equal to zero. I know that's not true because it would you know, there's definitely a pattern there. And number three says we're between 0 and 0.5. No, we're definitely not positive. Greater than 0.5. No, we're definitely not positive. So I like choice one. We're looking for an approximate value for our correlation coefficient. You'll notice our line of best fit is definitely trending uphill. And because the slope's positive, we could say our R value is also guaranteed to be positive. I'm going to kill those two choices instantly. And then because it's such a strong pattern, I'm going to choose the 0.9. The 0.21 would be very, very weak, and you'd see more erratic uh, spread out behavior if that was true. Number five here, they're looking for um, a correlation coefficient as close to negative one as possible. So as soon as you see the negative one, we know we're trending downhill. Um, so I'm going to kill choice two and choice three because those are trending in a positive direction. Now of the two remaining choices, negative one represents perfection. And I would say this one down here is very close to being perfectly in a row. So I chose choice four. And then last but not least, we're looking for the strongest positive correlation here. And it looks like this is the tightest pattern going uphill. Um, so we're going to, that's going to be my final choice there. 